its time. It's time. And now, it's time for Herman and Sharon. I love you. Thank you for joining us, all you good-looking, most of you are, people out there. We have a phenomenal interview today. We do. And it's most unusual, honey. This is a, this is a very unusual interview. I, I believe, and in fact, I'm sure it is, it's the first time of this kind I have ever, 33 years we've done this, ever done like this. But the couple we have, yes. they have rubbed shoulders with every <laughs> phenomenal human being in the Christian world wow. and secular wow. world. Wow, that's really saying that. We have Robert and Bobby Wolgamuth with us today. Uh, their parents are two dollar, daughters and grandparents of five. We that's had the great. daughters on a long yeah. time ago. And I was just telling some of these yeah. guys, uh, some, of, some of our Yeah, crew, Robert's been out with us I several said, times. You ought to see their daughters. They look like they're Hollywood kind of people. You know what I mean? I mean, they have that, look like <laughs> they should be on the front of People magazine. Um, authors of more than 20 books, best-selling book, he call, She Calls Me Daddy. And uh, there's so many things here that they're going to have to tell us yeah, themselves. It's best Too many if, things to read. It's be, well, you know, people don't want to talk about themselves. That's the reason we put it up there. Yeah, because, I know. Because but they're going to. We're going to make it. It is good so morning. neat to have you guys. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So nice good to have you. Thank you. you. you hey, came Dave. all the way from here. Orlando oh, today. All the way. Not Dave, too far. <laughs> hey, I'm just talking to my producer. Dave, you got to get a close-up of her hair because I'm envious of her hair. <laughs> Yeah. She has oh, got yes. the most beautiful, you know, every once in a while I'll be in church or somebody, something and I'll be behind a lady like you and I'll go and I'm thinking to myself, oh, Lord, that's the <laughs> hair I want right there. But you've well, got it's it. easy. Is I your mama's say, hair that way? Okay, you just lick it and yeah. put it back. And just like a mom getting her little boy ready for church. You oh, know, my you just, goodness. You just that's great. Push it back and it's done. I like well, it. Well, you, you guys are so well known. In fact, all of the books that we're talking about today come in hard copy. So all of the information on the screen while we're talking, there it is right there. Uh, you can go to that website and be available immediately <coughs> with your copy mm -hmm. because you are going to love this. Can you give me a little background on your background, mm. your mom and dad? Mm. Where, I mean, because <laughs> this guy, which you're not supposed to envy anybody, okay? So uh, I just say I admire him. There you go. Okay. That's, that works. Yeah. Uh, you were given <clears throat> genes from somebody <laughs> that is phenomenal. Missionary my, genes. my daddy was in ministry, pastor of a little church in Waynesboro, Pennsylvania, a when I was born. A little, a little tiny church. A little Mennonite church. Oh, and, uh -huh. Yoder. You go. That's you your go. maiden name. No kidding. Mm -hmm. Well, Lancaster County, Pennsylvania, <laughs> is where all the Wolgamuths are. Wow. Really? And then we went to. Maybe uh, we're relations. Maybe we are. <laughs> cool. Let's talk about that. Her background is the Kings. There's a there's a name okay. through the. Well, and other ones, okay. yes. but anyway. Yeah. Uh -huh. And then we went to the mission field. So I started school in the early 50s in Japan, and so we had this That's mission why experience. That's you're so smart. Oh. Missionary <laughs> kids That's are the they, best. I'm not true. kidding you. Take a test. Do a book on it. They them. dress funny, but they're smart. They are unbelievable. <laughs> the, yeah. God has given them yeah. an intellect because I have them on from time oh. to time. And oh. I'm going, every one of Missionary you. Missionary kids and homeschool kids. Yes. Yeah, that's right. Kind of a mm -hmm. similar thing, isn't it? Serve God. Yeah, but I mean, right. I mean, it's like yeah. the Lord says, okay, you're going to do this yeah. thing that I've asked you to yeah. do. I'm going to give you something yeah. that is superior. Mm. Well, I had two older brothers and an older sister, my mother and dad. And we were there just for two and a half years. It was a short-term term assignment with Youth for Christ, where my dad served, was, mm -hmm. was president of Youth for Christ for many years. Yeah. Yeah. Jack and then we came, back, we came back to Wheaton, Illinois, where I grew up after that. And then my mother had twins when she was 39. Really? Born in 1955, right. So there were six of us. And we were a very close family. We sang yeah. together. We did devotions together. You didn't together. go to Wheaton Free Church, did you? We did. Wheaton Free Church, yes. Why? Do you know somebody? That's where I went. Come on. <laughs> yes, I went to Wheaton Academy. Wheaton, wow. Illinois. Okay. Were you there when Wanda Lovelace was there? I, I, yes, I was. It is morning. Remember? <laughs> yes. That was his son. <laughs> the sun's in my heart. I think we're going to have to split them out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this so. this yeah. is a whole other You boys, go to your room. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Wow. Yeah. 
My right. sister's watching right now in Pennsylvania, yeah. and she's going nuts. Yeah, right. Is she? Mm. Bless yes. her heart. Because because we grew up in all of that yeah. that area. We, after after the show, let's talk about common friends. I bet we have a lot mm -hmm. of them. John R. Rice. Remember, he had a church in sure, Wheaton. Sure, absolutely. And people go, John R. Rice. Yeah, and all of his six daughters or whatever. <laughs> My goodness. As we know not. And uh, uh, who was the, who was the song leader at Free at at Wheaton Free Church? How uh, long ago? Uh, oh. oh. Okay, that's why we have to talk about this okay. afterwards. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. This is after. That's, that's okay. Okay, now, your background, continue that. Well, um, went to Taylor University. Wow. Out of Taylor, went into ministry and into Youth for Christ for six years. Met Bobby when I was between my sophomore and junior year in college. She at was, Taylor? No. She was in high school, and she was singing at Winona Lake, Indiana. We could also talk about oh, that. Yeah. Music, <laughs> has Sunday played a, music has played a at huge Billy part Sunday in Tabernacle. our relationship and in wow. really our ministry with yeah. our children and others. So we love music and mm -hmm. use it yeah. we do. to share we Jesus. Mm -hmm. We do. We sing a lot. Mm -hmm. Stretch, you felt. You just made there you people. go. <laughs> so Isn't continue. that the way it is? Continue, yes. That's right. She's and looking then, at me like, and oh, so, man. And then we started having children in the early 70s. Yeah and we were in Youth for Christ for six years, and then I got into the book publishing business. So we moved to Waco, Texas, mm -hmm. and then Nashville, Tennessee. I was president of, Youth for, uh, of Thomas Nelson for a number of years, and then my colleague Mike Hyatt and I started a publishing company mm -hmm. in 1984. Okay. So there you go. That's, so we that's love the books, that's we love company. music, yeah. we, we love, love each Jesus. other. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They, they, they're the couple that when Sharon and I are someplace, some gathering or whatever, and they're walking around, we go, there's the Lord. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, that's right. We're glad to be here with you are. all today. We are. But Thank it is, you. It is, but I, so I never knew we had all of this combination, Billy Sunday that's Tabernacle. Right. And, there it is. Mm. There it oh, is. my goodness. There but, it is. Okay, this book, it took you, what, was it two years? Just over two years to write. Mm -hmm. Two, but I mean, you, you guys. Did you write it together? Both we of you? did. We, we did. did. And you talk. You talk. It was almost like a sweatshop. Where you. I mean, it's like. Well, let's start with the big idea. Yes. We decided to somehow. I and I really can't remember how the idea came, but to put a lens on the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, what are the couples in the Bible, and what does God teach us about Himself, and about His relationship with us as a couple, mm -hmm. through His Word. So we snapped the lens on <clears throat> to look at couples of the Bible. And we were um, amazed. amazed. Yeah. Um, we learned a lot. It helped our relationship. We, uh, as mentors to younger couples, we felt like the Bible uh, has so many things to say to couples in marriages. Marriage is very, very important to God. And so why not look at how God, what God's plan was for originally for marriage? And then all the way, bookending the Bible, right, it right. begins with a marriage, it ends with a marriage that's in Revelation. Right. And everything in between either is for us to be instructed uh, or to be warned. And it has helped our relationship to look at these couples and say, how did God deal with them? What did He do? What can we do to seek God um, so that we are following Him um, in the way that would make our marriage a blessing to others. Okay, when so. you guys sat down, who came up with this idea? Bobby did first. She did. She has a red it, chair. It she came, does her Bible study every morning. It and came I, because I'm teaching young wives. I, I have a Bible study with young wives, and I keep wanting to help them understand what in today's culture it means to be a godly woman, a godly wife, a godly mother. What does it look like in, uh, where are our examples? And so, now I'll let Boy, you tell you, how are that. Are you qualified? Because i got to show you something. Okay. See this cover right here? Mm. I read this book yeah. too. They're responsible, again, <laughs> books are all over the place that they're responsible mm. for. But speaking of a couple, this girl right here, uh, mm -hmm. and she came to Denise you. Denise Jackson. Yes, mm -hmm. Denise Jackson and Alan uh, was going through some, you know, like men go a little wacky. <laughs> And so she came to you, speaking of couples, mm -hmm. and, and she asked me to pray for her. And what did you say? And she said, would you pray that my husband would come back to me? And at the time, you didn't At the know time, I was. did not know who she was. She first walked up she to me. She was just a lady <coughs> in, our, in our Sunday school class. Someone in our Sunday school class. And I said, I can't pray that prayer for you. And she looked shocked. And I said, I have a much 
bigger prayer for you. I'm going to pray that you become the woman God wants you to be. That's so good. Oh my goodness. And so good. you will read in that book what happened because she became the woman God wanted her to be. Mm -hmm. Yes, we work as a couple. Um, we, we always want to honor God in our personal lives and then that overflows to the person we're married to. And um, that is why I believed so strongly that we needed to look at couples in the Bible. How did God make Adam and Eve, um, how did he help them? Uh, of course, it started in perfection, so we get a picture of God's perfect design for marriage. Right. There's nowhere else to find it except God's Word. Wow. That's right. So that's why we wrote Couples of the Bible. Uh, Denise wrote in her book, to Bobby Wogamuth, your radiance and love for the Lord is a perfect example mm -hmm. of what Christ means when he calls us to be the light mm -hmm. in a dark world. Wow. I am forever grateful for your intercessory prayer on my behalf. Mm -hmm. There you go. That's, that's I mean, very sweet. I mean, but, but I mean, you just yeah. got that times thousands. I mean, you guys are just, mm -hmm. have uh, influenced so many lives. Yeah. But here we go. So obviously, I, I set that up so that you folks will get your copy because it is so different. For example, you start out on Monday, their story, Tuesday, their life and times, Wednesday, can you imagine, Thursday, they're in scripture, and then Friday, their legacy and prayer. So you mm -hmm. have it. Like a week. Yeah, a week, yes, but it's 52. Laid, it's, it's laid out in 52 weeks, so at the end of a year, you will have been introduced to 52 couples, and you've spent a week with each one Isn't of them. Isn't that great? Yeah. I've never seen this. Yeah. Well, uh, Women of the Bible, by the same yes, publisher, yeah. Zondervan, mm -hmm. did very well. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then we followed up with Men of the Bible. I was the co-author yes. of that, same format. But we felt like couples needed to be highlighted, as Bobby wow. just described, because, in fact, mm -hmm. it's, it's an overview of Scripture in chronological order, and what you're doing is you're stepping across the shoulders of these couples. So you learn the flow of Scripture. That's sort of a side benefit but it's all through the lens of these couples. And you can spend a week with a biblical with, that's couple. That's right, that's mm -hmm. right. I mean, because I mean, a lot of people give their idea, you know, mm -hmm. here, you right. know, we, yes. we might give an example sure. of us, sure. and people, okay, that's what that is. But, right. but you're talking about biblical right. truth right. here right. that you can count on. That's right. It doesn't waver. That's right, and you, it can be used that way, but then there's an index in the back that if your struggle is infertility yeah. or money or power or moving, the kinds mm -hmm. of things that couples deal with today, yeah. you can actually go to the index and find the couple that dealt with that issue. Now, how did you choose the couples that you chose Ooh. for the Bible? Um, obviously, there are the biggies um, mm -hmm. that everyone has heard of, but we tried to find couples where it, we learned something about the character of God. So. Othniel and Oxa. You might have never heard of Othniel and Oxa. <laughs> you haven't. But Othniel was a warrior, and Oxa's father was the great warrior Caleb. Well, I wanted to see what what is it like. She's the daughter of a warrior. She's this married to a warrior. What kind of woman, and what can she do in that situation? So we highlighted. We did a lot of research. Um, we worked with a Jewish researcher. So we found out about their life and times, what it meant in that culture to be a woman or to bow down or wow. to, um, to eat certain things or to wear certain things. We found out what that cultural um, right. timeline was and then we tried to make it uh, applicable so as a couple we learned a lot of things. We started discussing things that we hadn't discussed before. Yeah, we I'm talked sure. about Adam and Eve. Adam was a passive male standing right next to Eve when she took mm -hmm. that fruit. Mm -hmm. What is it like when, and why was he passive? Do I do something in my marriage that prohibits Robert from confronting me? That's is good. there something that I set up well, that's a good in point. my mm -hmm. attitude that makes him afraid to talk to me? Well, pretty much in 43 years of marriage, there have been times he's been afraid to talk to me mm -hmm. because I've been such a bully or I've been so strong-willed or stubborn. So we had to talk about what does it what was it really like to be that couple and doing this just brought out so many wonderful discussion questions for us and yeah. things to pray about and adjust in our personalities in our marriages 
so that um, if it's the passive aggressive thing or if it's uh, a woman having an idea like um, Claudius and Pilate, Claudius came to Pilate and said, I had a dream last night. Jesus is innocent. And he just swept by her yeah. and didn't listen. Well, he, he succumbed to the pressure of the crowd, right. yeah. wow. which men can understand. Yeah. Their wife is yeah. whispering truth in their ear, mm -hmm. and they're disregarding it because of the pressure of the crowd. She's yeah. done that to me for years. <laughs> and it's like, and as I've often said, I would have so much more money if I ever listened to her. <laughs> and I mean, it's amazing. And, but I've talked to other men and said, yeah. tell me about it. That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, th the process of writing, Bobby said this, she wrote the first draft with this Jewish Christian researcher. And then I took the, the manuscript and edited the whole thing. And then edits three and four, we did together. And literally sat at laptops and Bobby read it out loud. And we edited every single word together. It's 130,000 words. Wow. And it was an amazing project. And there, there were times when it was really tough because you can't compromise on a word. No. You have to choose one or the other. Yes. But it was, Bob, as Bobby said, it was a great experience for us. Mm -hmm. So we're sure hoping that other couples, we think they will be I, helped I've, by I've it. never seen anything like it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and, and then what I love to read the background, because whenever mm -hmm. I see a production of a, whatever movie or whatever, I'm more interested in yeah. what happened behind the making it. of. Behind yes. the scenes. Yes. Right. And sure. how they wrote the script, right. what they threw out, what they didn't do, sure. mm -hmm. the editing, all of that. Sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. So when, when you go through this and you see the, what you went through for two years, this isn't like, oh, let's just uh, have a, let's have one on couples yeah, of the Bible. Right. No, okay, no, let's go in the Bible. The Bible is very honest. You know, it, sometimes I've thought, wow, God put this in the yeah, Bible? Yeah. But he's so, he understands our human nature, yeah. our deceptive hearts, yeah. and yet his grace and his second chance and his overriding providence comes through so clearly. It gives me a lot of peace as we go through life as a couple, as we watch our children and in their marriages, I, I am so, I'm so overwhelmed with the grace of God and that He comes to us and instructs us that in the night He might give us a thought. That's right. Like Jochebed and Amram, mm -hmm. that the fact that they were, they were, had this baby Moses and the king was killing babies. I said to my daughter, imagine you hear Mrs. Smith down the street just lost her little boy because they came and got him and threw him in the Nile. And you have this little baby, you're trying to keep him quiet. He's newborn, then he gets to be two months and three months and he's starting to cry louder. And so you're just desperate. And you and your husband say, "How this baby's so special. Mm -hmm. How can we keep him alive? So as I'm reading and researching and as we're writing about this couple, I'm thinking, oh, what if I were Jochebed? What if that were my baby? I'd say, oh, Jesus, or I would say God at that yeah. point, Jehovah, what should I do? And God gave Jochebed an idea yes. to make that little ark. Yes. And I said, don't you know, she didn't just say, okay, here's a few little reeds. Uh, she held she it up so to the light terrible. and she said, I better dab it a little more here, it could sink. I better put a little more tar here. And wow. even in researching that, the very material she used for the ark was papyrus. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that is the very thing our scripture was given to us That's on right. papyrus. That's right. That is such a, an aha. When we are coding the little boats that our children are going to be launched on, we better make sure every little crack is daubed with God's word. Mm -hmm. So anyway, then letting go. I mean, have you all had to let go of children? Yeah, we wow. had to let our children go, whether it's kindergarten or college or to marriage or into the workplace. We let our children go. What yeah. a better couple to mentor me than Jochebed and Amram. Yeah. I mean, this, this book has absolutely changed my thinking about God's involvement in our lives as a couple. Nothing, nothing is beyond His reach, wow. including when we're scared because somebody's coming to take our child. It's, it's like mm -hmm. uh, Ed Heinz and our friend spoke Sunday in church. And you know, that's, mm. that's Jen's yes. grandfather. Right. Jen Barrett's yes. grandfather. And uh, he was saying, uh, he, he's, uh, on the subject, but he said, what is your Isaac? Mm. You know, after the message, he says, if you have one that you haven't laid on the altar, whatever it is, mm. whatever that need is, mm. just come here and just lay it on the altar. Mm. 
in your mind. Just stand here and lay it on. Yeah. I mean, just exactly mm. what you're talking about. So, so many times we hang on mm. to things like this. Mm. Whenever we do this, we keep it. It's just, it's just a, a way of life. You know, one of our favorite couples was Jairus and his wife. We don't even know her name. But you remember Jairus, yes. he and his wife had a very sick daughter. And he's a leader in the temple. Wow. He's a significant person, yeah. a proud Jew. And th as the story goes, he didn't just go to Jesus and make a request or even bow down. He humbled himself and fell at Jesus' feet. We yes. talk about that kind of desperation as a couple that brings you, in fact, we heard the other day, we all want a miracle, but we don't want to be in a situation where we need a miracle. Yeah, that's right. Good point. Right? Yes. And so he needed a miracle, and he did what mm. he did. It would have been a really a shameful thing for him to do what he did. Again, not just approaching Jesus and speaking to him, but literally falling at his feet. So those kinds of things give us a chance to introduce the couples that we're talking to through mm. this book in experiencing the same kind of repentance or forgiveness or contrition or, or praying, praying together, praying together on your knees. The Thursday, the fourth day of the week, we take scripture that ties into the big idea and then questions. So that a couple, the two of them, or a small group of couples or women, more likely, would go through this book together. Our, our idea is that rarely, and we'd be great if this would happen, but a couple actually going through Monday through Thursday together, and we talk about this in the introduction, mm -hmm. it'd be great if they would. But on Friday, we say to the woman who's probably reading this book with her small group, invite your husband to the prayer time. We have prayers written out, so if he's yes. a little nervous about praying spontaneously, we've written it all out for him, so he can share with her at least in that day. A whole week would be great, but at least on Friday, she can invite her husband to pray with her, and we've guided, we've given guided prayers on mm -hmm. Friday that wrap up the whole week. It's well done. It yeah. is just well done. Dennis and Barbara Rainey right. was the, wrote the four. In fact, many of the words in there, it's like it, it has the capacity to inspire and strengthen your marriage. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that alone yeah. is just amazing. And it's, it's not pop psychology. Yeah. It's God's Word. Yeah. Sometimes we default yeah. to people who are experts and you know, yeah. the Lord uses those folks. But this, this is going right back to the source and asking God through His Word to help us with the issues that we face. Mm -hmm. Now you, you have in the back, this is kind of neat, I, I go all the way back to 447, the acknowledgments, and you talk about individuals that, that you were thinking about when you were putting all this together. Mm -hmm. how, how do you, with obviously all of the headings, how do you break that down when you're when you have the scripture one and then break it down so that we can kind of paraphrase live it how do you do that you everything we write we put through the filter of our own experience even though we don't talk about ourselves in this book at all there's not a yeah, personal story not, yeah. at mm -hmm. all yeah. this is telling the story of the scripture that's what i thought and then so we amazing. have one day that says can you imagine yeah. and we ask you as a couple can you imagine what it would be like to you know, have a daughter that you're so desperate you're willing to go to Jesus. You've tried all the doctors, now mm -hmm. you go to Jesus. Um, so we help you as a couple find out where you enter into the story yeah. and what you can do. Can you imagine moving and not knowing where you're going? Right, like and Abraham and Sarah. And trusting your husband because okay. the Lord spoke to him. You didn't hear that conversation. Yeah. Right. And so you trusted him and wow. you moved. I mean, moving mm -hmm. is hard enough. Yeah. yeah. But if you, can you imagine not even knowing where you're going? And so we, exactly. we put the reader, we put the couple right there mm -hmm. to experience that, that challenge, that journey. Mm -hmm. The Rainey said, the honesty of Scripture allows us to see ourselves as people in a process. process right. Mm -hmm. right. I mean, and, and mm -hmm. you know, that's what this develops. And they also said, learning what husbands and wives can do to grow in the healthy, whole relationship with God and with each other. With each other, right. Mm -hmm. Dennis and Barbara, you know Dennis and Barbara with Family Life. Yeah. They've been so kind yeah. in yeah. giving us the forward. You must be close. We are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, we are. Mm -hmm. We are. And other friends who They have are a couple of the Bible. We say, yeah. you know, we all want to be couples of the Bible. Right. You know, who we, we <laughs> use the Bible as the textbook for our marriage, and they are a couple yeah. that That's right. truly follow God's Word. And, you know, with all of the twists and turns, you say, okay, in all your ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct thy paths. That's the goal. Yeah. 
Yeah. How can I seek God in this? Yes, we are people in process. I am not the woman I want to be. I'm not the wife I want to be. I'm not where I used to be. But by God's grace, I'm moving with my husband, helping me. We are pushing back the chaos of the world and moving toward what God wants us to be. Mm -hmm. Always to bless others. And this is so neat to apply the Bible to all of this. Yeah. Yes. I mean, because, yes. you know, it could be written, you know, I, I interviewed 500 couples and this is what came out of it. Mm -hmm. But to have the exactly. scriptural tag exactly is right. so important. In fact, yeah. you say mm -hmm. our prayer throughout the process that these stories would challenge and inspire godly relationships. Mm -hmm. that, would be a, that would be a dream, wouldn't it? Wow. That the work that we've done would literally help other people. That's sort of an overwhelming thought that the Lord would actually use something that you stroked under your keyboard to help marriages, help mm -hmm. couples, help, help them not only grow in their relationship, with each other but with God. So you suggest this like be used in a Bible study with a group of I women? I think it can be. I, I know that that is going to be a way that women use it. Yeah. Yeah. I think we have had couples go through it as couples. Mm -hmm. um, some young married who uh, one girl came to me and said I didn't have a mom and a dad together to look at. I had no model. Oh, yeah. I need models. Mm -hmm. And what more can you hand someone that has not come from a home where there were godly relationships or where a yeah. marriage was centered on God's Word and say, you know, there's, there's a place for you to find a mentor and it's in here. Bobby, that camera is yours right there. Okay. Mm. Share about a minute and a half. Someone watching, they need mm. a mm. portion of this. Oh. Well, if I could jump through, if I could jump through the TV screen, I, I embrace women and men that are trying in this culture to, to forge a godly marriage, it's very difficult. Mm -hmm. We live in difficult times. One of the couples that so inspired us was Noah and his wife. We don't even know her name, mm -hmm. but they were, in, they were in chaotic times. And yet God spoke to them, they believed him, they trusted him, and with their family and daughters-in-law, they got into that boat, and that's what we do. We just get into the boat. That's all we do. We follow His instruction. Um, my prayer for you would be that you would become the women God meant you to be and the men God meant you to be, and by His grace, mm -hmm. a couple who can be a mentor to your own children, to your grandchildren, that you would set in process a legacy, because this is... It's not about us. It's not about our happiness. It's about living to please God, knowing who God is and what pleases Him. That's, that's the most important thing we can do. That's really all that matters. Yes. So that's, um, you know, if, if we can pray that for you, it would be awesome. Get your copy. Mm -hmm. You will absolutely <laughs> love it. God bless right. you. Bye-bye.